In the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war. We play and call it work. Mini Wargamer Dave here from MiniWarGaming.com. Welcome Wargamers to the unboxing of the new Indomitus 9th edition Warhammer 40k box set. First things first, let's take out the plastic. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Ooh, photo, art, picture, awesomeness. Oh, I love the new plastic smell. Another piece of art. New big thick rule book, which we'll dive into in just a minute. The Edge of Silence. The Edge of Silence is a book which combines the backstory and lore for both armies, pictures of beautifully painted models, and the data sheets for both armies. Both armies including the Necrons and the Space Marines. Included in this box set is also the Indominus Assembly Guide, which is very, very important because there's a lot of bits. Look what else we have in the box. We have a little flyer for Indominus, a new Warhammer 40k novel from Gav Thorpe. Let's not forget the bag o' bases, Space Marine Transfer Sheet, and this is everything that you get in the new Warhammer 40k Indominus box set. If you want to watch the new battle report using the new rules from this box set, then click on the link in the video description below. That will be in the Mini Wargaming Vault. For those of you who would like to see the rest of this unboxing video in detail, just continue watching the video. Let's start with the new rule book. This is 372 pages of new edition goodness. The first 15 pages of the book focuses on the Warhammer hobby. Collecting, painting, and gaming. Next, we'll learn about the Dark Imperium, which if you're brand new to the hobby and the lore, it's fantastic because it teaches you about the Imperium, the warp. You'll learn about different regions of space, such as the Great Rift and the Imperium Nihilus. We go all the way back to the Emperor of Mankind, where you see where it all began. And you'll discover the rule of the Imperium, which would not be complete without the Angels of Death, otherwise known as the Space Marines. And what better warriors of the faith to accompany the Space Marines than the Adeptus Sororitas? Which of course will lead you to the Inquisition and their different Ordos, such as the Ordo Hereticus, the Ordo Melius, and the Ordo Xenos. You'll glean knowledge of the perils unknown, and the enemy within which undoubtedly will lead you to my favorite part, the Dark Gods. More on that later. A history in 40k would not be complete without telling you about the saga Imperialis. Here you learn about the ages of mankind. Let's delve into the remnants of a dark age. Technology is but dimly understood by the mass of humanity. The collapse of society during the Age of Strife brought a violent end to millennia of human confidence. This will lead you to the Age of Darkness and the Long War. Here you'll learn more about the Horus Heresy and the fight between the legions of the Chaos Space Marines. Humanity is not lost. There is hope, for there is the Age of the Imperium. And for all those Xenos fans out there, you'll learn more about the Alien Tides. For as long as humanity has sailed the stars, they have encountered alien races. Time passes strangely in the warp, and its corrupting energies make a mockery of that which the human race considers possible. All of this will lead to the Gathering Storm for the opening of the Great Rift was presaged by an era of dark portents and monumentous happenings. Let's see what the Age of the Dark Imperium has to offer. For it's been 10,000 years since the Emperor ascended to the Golden Throne. And finally we come to the Indomitus Crusade. And now we get into the Age of Witches. For after the Great Rift opened, the darkness of the Noctis Eterna hid many evils. In this next section, we're going to look at the Warriors of the Emperor, which will include the armies of the Imperium. You'll learn all about the Adeptus Astartes and that they shall know no fear, with all of their accompanying Space Marine chapters, starting with the shield that slays Death Watch to the incorruptible Grey Knights, to the Adeptus Sororitas, ever the Warriors of the Faith, to the Adeptus Custodes, the Golden Legion. Then we've got the Imperial Guard Astra Militarum, serving as both a flesh and bone shield for the Emperor's realm, and as an unstoppable sledgehammer with which it crushes its foes. And if that doesn't tickle your fancy, let's take a look at the Adeptus Mechanicus, the Priesthood of Mars. You like big robots? Check out the Quester Imperialis, the Imperial Knights, or perhaps the Imperial Agents, the Emperor's hidden hand. 
And of course, this section would not be complete without a bunch of beautifully painted models and all the photos that go along with it, giving you but a glimpse of the colorful possibilities. And as we can see, it goes on and on and on and on and on and on. My personal favorite part of this book is talking about the lost and the damned. If you're a follower of chaos, then this section is for you. If following the Imperium doesn't quite resonate with you, how about some heretic Astartes? Some death to the false emperor? Some galaxy-burning Black Legion, led by Abaddon the Despoiler? And by doing all this, you'll learn about the Traitor Legions, as well as the Renegades. A lot of this will, of course, focus on Warzone Vigilus. And now for the specifics, the Rotted Brotherhood Death Guard. One of the original Traitor Legions who turned against the Emperor in the Horus Heresy. Or perhaps a Thousand Sons, for all is dust with these guys. They were one of the Emperor's original legions, but are now enthralled to Zinch, the Changer of Ways. Traitor Legions would not be complete without talking about the Chaos Demons, the Legions of the Dark Gods. And when you got something Imperium, you typically get the Chaos Counterpart, and in this case, the Chaos Knights. For they find honor through Annihilation. And now we go into the model showcase, which is very curious because I'm not seeing anything World Eaters or Emperor's Children. I wonder why. That's not to say that I don't like these painted Black Legion models, or this terrifying Fly Mortarian. We even have a dedicated Thousand Suns mini painting page. And also the Chaos Demons, as well as the Chaos Knights. But where, oh where, were the World Eaters and Emperor's Children? I'm really curious about that. Nevertheless, let us dive into the Xenos Invaders and talk about the Xenos Threat, which of course is an enemy to both the Imperium and the Dark Imperium. Let's start with the craft world Eldari. Eldar trickery, if you've ever seen one. Space elves, maybe? Or their evil cousins, the Jukari, raiders from the Dark City. Or perhaps the Harlequins or the Inari. Not gonna lie, in the eyes of a heretic Astartes, it's all the same. Their number is Legion, their name is Death. The Necrons. These guys are the result of a race of people that sold their souls for eternal life. But then you got the orcs, the green tide, who are tough and brutal and relentlessly thuggish and impossibly numerous. But apparently orcs as a whole are not complex beings. And then we have the t the for the <clears throat> we got these guys, the great devourer, the tyranids, who have invaded the galaxy from beyond the intergalactic void, who have quickly been recognized as one of the gravest threats not only to the Imperium, but to any form of life in the galaxy. Which leads into the Gene Stealer cults, the Heralds of the Star Children, which began with but a single claimed victim. Then we get into the Xeno Showcase, which will show you a considerable amount of eye candy. Look at all these guys. Does this not make you want to collect these guys? And after 192 pages of lore and model showcase, we get into the rules of the new game. In this section of the book, you'll learn how to play Warhammer 40k. You'll learn the basic rules, everything from the missions to the armies to the data sheets to the keywords and units. Here we talk about the battlefield with terrain features, measuring distances, wholly within and within. We'll get into dice and the rerolls and the roll-offs and the sequencing. You'll also learn how the data sheet is broken down. We go in depth here for the battle round, starting with the command phase. The movement phase, which consists of moving normally, advancing, remaining stationary or falling back. We also go over reinforcements, moving over terrain and flying. You'll learn how transports work, whether they embark or disembark, and what happens when they get destroyed. Heroic interventions, pylons, consolidations, and aircrafts. We'll dive deep into the psychic phase and the psychic powers that your psychers get, starting with smite, of course. You'll learn how the tests are performed and deny the witches. Next up, we have the shooting phase. Here you'll learn how to select targets, what happens when you're locked in combat, and the number of attacks that you get. You'll discover all of the ranged weapon types. Everything from assault to grenade to pistol to heavy to rapid fire. You'll learn about big guns never tired, blast weapons, and what lookout sir means. You'll learn how to make attacks when firing. You'll learn about the hit roll, the wound roll, the saving throw, inflicting damage, and of course how saves work, and mortal wounds, ignoring wounds. Next you'll learn about the charge phase and how to charge with a unit, what heroic interventions are and how they work, how you perform them, what happens when you charge over terrain, or flying when charging. Also Overwatch, which leads us into the fight phase. You'll learn how to fight, how to pile in, making close combat attacks, 
which models can fight, and the number of attacks that you get. You'll learn how to select targets and how to consolidate. This will bring you to the morale phase and making morale tests, combat attrition tests, and unit coherency checks. That is the brief basic overview of the rules of this game. This rulebook also includes missions. It'll teach you how to muster armies, reading and understanding mission briefings. It'll show you how to create the battlefield, deploy your forces, determine who goes first, resolve pre-battle rules, beginning the battle, ending the battle, and determining the victor. You'll learn how objective markers work, and units that are objective secured. Here's a new mission included in this book. Only War. It shows the battle size, the size of the armies, and the duration of the battle. When creating the battlefield, it shows you the size of the table you should be using. Next, we'll learn how to build an army and understand the power ratings and points. You'll learn what battle forged means and what command points are used for. You'll learn about gaining and refunding command points. Through all this, you'll learn about your battlefield roles and any command costs or command benefits or restrictions they might have. You'll see what the new detachments are and how they work and the command benefits you get from them. Included here are core stratagems that any army can benefit from. We'll learn about strategic reserves. You'll learn how and when to place unit into reserves, what happens when they arrive from reserves, and setting up reserve units. And then there are actions, performing them and performing psychic actions because that's something different. And here we're gonna get into the terrain features, the obstacles and area terrain and hills and buildings, and all of the terrain traits that terrain features can have. Whether it's defensible, a defense line, breachable, difficult ground, dense cover, unstable position, exposed position, obscuring, light cover, heavy cover, scalable, inspiring. And then we give you an example of common terrain features with the terrain traits that they have. They've taken the liberty of including some example battlefields. This gives you the varying sizes of gaming boards, plus there's a visual demonstration of how dense the cover should be. You'll learn about the different ways of playing the game, starting with open play which is free form and permissive. In open play, anything goes, whether it's deploying your armies without worrying about points or power, or inventing your own missions. This is where highly themed and entirely unbalanced games work, or anything else that you think will prove enjoyable. Even though it's open play, there's still some structure to it. You still learn what you need to do pre-battle and how to win the game. And they even give you some open play missions, which have unique objectives. And a third one created here just for good measure. They also give you a list of suggestions for open play missions. And now we dive into the match play way of playing this game. There are multiple ways to play match play, each stemming from a different mission pack, such as Maelstrom of War. But they suggest the best way to get started with match play is the Eternal War missions, which you'll soon see. Of course, setting up the battle will not be complete in an Eternal War mission pack without the sequence below. There's 10 steps here. Scratch that, there's 16 steps. In addition to the primary objectives, there's a whole slew of secondary objectives you can get throughout the game as well. Some are endgame objectives, some are progressive objectives. And here we have the Eternal War missions, starting with Combat Patrol, Incisive Attack. Next we have a Combat Patrol Outriders mission. Now we go into Divide and Conquer, which is the first Incursion mission. Which just as a reminder, Combat Patrol, Incursion, Strike Force, and Onslaught determine the size of armies used in the missions. The second incursion mission is Crossfire, and the third is Center Ground. We've got a fourth incursion mission, Forward Push, and a fifth, Ransack. We finish off the Eternal War incursion missions with a shifting front. Next, we have the first Eternal War Strike Force mission, Retrieval mission, and Frontline Warfare. Third, we have the Four Pillars, which if you played 8th edition 40k, you would know as one of those Eternal War missions, No Man's Land, and Scorched Earth, with Vital Intelligence making number six Eternal War Strike Force mission. Going into the Onslaught missions, Lines of Battle, All Out War, and Pathway to Glory finish off the Onslaught missions for a total of three. All in all, that brings us to 18 Eternal War missions, depending on the size of your army. That brings us to narrative play. One of the most common ways of engaging a narrative play is to recreate famous battles found in codexes, campaign books, and black library novels. And here you'll learn about Crusade Forces. Crusade Force is one that allows a player to track the development of their army, from the greenest of recruits to the most hard-bitten veterans over the course of many battles. Included here are Crusade Cards, which help you keep track 
of the missions and the upgrades that your units get. You'll gain experience, and you have combat tallies that you'll keep track of. You'll also get requisition points, which can be used to purchase upgrades throughout your Crusade force. Any requisition points that you don't spend are saved and can be used later. And then we have a whole page of requisitions and what you can spend your points on, whether it's fresh recruits, rearming and resupplying, or relics. You could also spend them on specialist reinforcements or warlord traits. And here we talk about ranks and battle honors. If a unit has accrued enough experience points, it'll gain a promotion and go up a rank, from battle ready to blooded, for an example. There's also weapon enhancements and psychic fortitudes. You'll also gain access to crusade relics, which include mastercrafted armor or laurels of victory, or you can get antiquity relics or legendary relics. I guess it's inevitable you'll learn what out of action means. Whether you take a devastating blow or you get a battle scar. Here we'll go over selecting Crusade Army, and they've been kind enough to provide a permissionable photocopy for personal use, Crusade Sheet. Here you got your Crusade Mission Pack, which tells you the sequence you need to follow in order to do a Crusade mission. Agendas help to add flavor to the missions, and this would not be complete without a bunch of Crusade missions, starting with Sweep and Clear and going to Supply Drop. And rounding it off with Assassinate, those first three are combat patrol missions. For the Incursion, we have Supply Cache, The Relic, Sabotage, Recon Patrol, The Ritual, and Behind Enemy Lines. Starting with the Strike Force missions, we have Supplies from Above, Narrow the Search, Cut Off the Head, Retrieval, Raise and Ruin, and Ambush. Starting with the Onslaught missions, we got Firestorm, Grand Assault, and Field of Glory. The last part of the book will focus on the rules appendix, which is much needed. It gives you a list in alphabetical order of what constitutes last weapons, what is considered a flyer, and it also goes over rare rules. The appendix would not be complete without the rules terms glossary in alphabetical order. And to finish off the book, we have some gnarly artwork. Oh, the Xenos fighting all the live long day. And that concludes what's in the rulebook. Next up, we're gonna take a look at the models that you get in the Indomitus box set in detail. On the first page of the assembly booklet, it explains the different base sizes and the contents of the box. One of the key features is showing this one-to-one -one ratio base size diagram, which helps you determine what base size you need for the model you're working on. The first faction we'll be looking at is Space Marines, and the first model is the Primaris Captain. He comes on the same sprue as the Necron character. Take a look at the detail on this guy. There's the skeleton that goes on his shield, and there's his base. Next up, we have the Primaris Lieutenant with all of his options. The Lieutenant also comes on his own little sprue attached to another Necron character. Here you got his close combat weapon, his shield, and his ranged weapon. Next, let's take a look at the Primaris Chaplain. This dude will come on this big sprue. Here you got his weapon plus his pack. Jumping on to the Judiciar, this character comes on the same sprue as the Chaplain. And taking a look at some of his bits, I must say, this is my favorite model in the entire box. Next, we'll look at the Blade Guard Veteran Squad, as well as the Blade Guard Ancient. Both the Squad and the Ancient are found on the same sprue as the Chaplain and the Judiciar. Just gonna show off the standard right here from the Blade Guard Ancient. Next, we'll move on to the Assault Intercessor Squad, my favorite new unit in the box. This unit of Assault Intercessors come on a couple sprues. And this is where we look at some sweet, sweet chain swords. Next up, we have the Outrider Squad. This sprue is pretty obvious and self-explanatory, but it's still fun to see. Primaris sized bikers. This is the day we see them. You got your exhaust pipes, your rims, your tires, chain swords, packs, arms. Let's not forget the Eradicator Squad. These bad boys will also come on the big sprue. And let's take a look at some of their guns. This is sweet. Now moving on to the Necron, starting with the Overlord. He comes on the same sprue as the Primaris Captain on this side. Here's a nice close-up of his melee weapon. Next up, we have the Scorpec Lord. This bad boy has a really big sprue. Here we got his massive blade, his huge gun, and his bladed talon hands. Let's take a look at the Plasmancer. Comes on the same big sprue as the Scorpec Lord. This is kind of neat. We have an arm with all of this hanging tapestry-like design from his back, plus his weapon. And then over here, we have the other half. 
What about the Royal Warden? This comes on the same sprue as the Primaris Lieutenant. And here's a close-up of his bits in all of their great detail. And here we got some Scorpec Destroyers on their own sprue. Their bits and weapons and arms and limbs and flails and spiky bits. Let's look at the Cryptal Thralls and the Canoptech Reanimator. After all, they both come on the same sprue. This reanimator is huge. Look at the bits on this thing. Look at those pointy legs. Necron Warriors and the Scarab Swarms. For they too come on the same sprue. And here you got your Gauss Goss weapons. And look at that. You know what? I'm a fan of how that looks, how there's different sizes of them. It gives the illusion that there's some layers and levels to the models. And you got some different weapon options on here too. Necron players should be happy. And that concludes the unboxing of the Indominus box set for the new Warhammer 40k 9th edition. Click on the link below if you wish to see some battle reports associated with the new rules that you get in this Indominus box set. We are doing a whole bunch of stuff. We're going to be releasing a whole bunch of new content related to 9th edition 40k, so stay tuned for that. And stay tuned for that matchup. You're going to want to see it. Leave your comments below. Let me know if you like this style of unboxing and what other kind of content you want to see. We're going to be making a bunch of stuff, but it's nice to know your thoughts as well. Thank you very much, guys. Happy Wargaming, and I'll see you in the next video. All right there, folks. Steve and I are in the vault right now about to play the battle report out of the Indominus box. Space Marines, new Primaris Assault versus the new Necrons using all the new fancy characters we have access to. Now, if you're not already a vault member and you want to check out this battle report, you can click on the link down below and get yourself a seven-day free trial and check out this game as well as all the brand new 9th edition coverage Coming out rapid fire at you.